I want to tell you that um, chapters 16 and 17 are going to be combined. And we're going to be in those two chapters for a while. So just get comfortable. Okay, we're going to be in 16 and 17 for about a month. Okay, and if you know people that have taken AP Chem before, you may have heard that this is like hard, difficult. And yes, it is. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. Acid-base chemistry is some of the most challenging of the year. However, that is why we will slow down. Okay, because if I taught this at the pace that we normally go at, I think I think I would lose some of you along the way. Okay, and I don't want to do that. So. We're going to be in these two chapters for quite a while, and let me give you some advice, right? I, I need you all to do your very, very best to sort of keep up with me. And what I mean by that is when I teach a concept in, in these chapters, I really need you to work hard to understand that material right then and there, master it, Try to be diligent about doing some of the problems on that topic from your problem set like that night or maybe the next day because what I see too often is because people are focusing on other things maybe that's reassessing you know how my feelings on that maybe people are focusing on a reassessment or they're just focused on other things and by the time they say okay now I'm really gonna put focus on this these topics in chemistry we're so deep into acid base that it's overwhelming because by the time you're ready to focus we've been learning for two weeks and it's it's just it's really hard if you have to do it all at once so I'm gonna teach little bits at a time try your very very best to learn, to understand, to master each concept as we go. It'll, it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay. So what's in 16 is a lot of just the foundations of acid-base chemistry. And I want to start off with what your understanding of acids and bases probably is from your Chem 1 classes. And you guys probably have an understanding which is called the Arrhenius concept. And that name should sound familiar. We saw the name of this scientist at the end of our kinetics chapter. Arrhenius is responsible for that collision theory. But he also gave some definitions of acids and bases. All right, Arrhenius says, Acids are things that produce hydrogen ions, okay, when they're in solution. Bases are things that produce hydroxide ions. And that might be how you defined acids and bases in Chem 1. And it's not that this understanding is wrong. It's not wrong. It's just not quite complete. Okay, for example, the name of this compound we've seen it a lot ammonia guys ammonia is a base right it's a base we're gonna use it a lot you're gonna see it a lot in the next month or so do you see hydroxide in its formula anywhere me neither and it definitely is a base so this understanding of acids and bases has to be tweaked a little bit and so this other scientist come along, comes along, okay, Bronsted Lowry, and gives us an alternate understanding. The acid definition is really not that different, okay? Acids are things that donate, give away hydrogen ions. The base understanding, though, has been tweaked a little bit, changed, but. Before I even talk about that, I want to make sure you understand why the word 
proton is here. Okay. Focus right here, H plus. Can you guys tell me, please, a hydrogen ion has how many protons in it? One. How many neutrons? Not one. Zero. What does a plus one charge mean? What happened? It lost an electron. Well, a hydrogen atom only has one electron to start with, and now we've lost it. Hydrogen ions are sometimes referred to as protons because that's all it is. Okay? So you can use these these two concepts interchangeably. I don't care which way you think of it. Okay? But this new understanding says that acids are things that give away hydrogen ions. Bases are things that accept hydrogen ions or accept protons. Your choice on how you say it. Doesn't matter. Okay? So this is the concept we're going to focus on. Think of this as like, this is the old, this is the new. You okay now? Yeah, can I go? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So I want you to look at this reaction, and I want you to look at it from left to right, just like we read in English. Which reactant is the one that is giving away, donating its hydrogen ion? Which reactant? HCl. And, and you could, probably could have told me this was the acid in this scenario, because this is an acid we've worked with a lot. Okay, but it gives away its hydrogen. What is water doing from left to right? It's accepting a hydrogen ion. As weird as it sounds to say, water is the base in this scenario. Okay, this guy is donating a hydrogen ion. This one is accepting. This polyatomic ion over here, we're going to see it a lot in these acid-base chapters. This was not on that chart of polyatomic ions I gave you at the beginning of the year. But I want you to know its name. It's called hydronium. H3O plus. We'll see it a lot in these chapters. Let's talk a little more vocabulary here. Okay. First and foremost, guys, are we all good with the fact that there is no element A? Right? We know that. Okay. If you ever see me write HA, all I am meaning that to represent is just some random acid. Like, think of A as standing, standing for any, any acid. And my apologies, this is a typo. This arrow here should have a should be a double-headed arrow. That's my fault. What does a double-headed arrow mean? Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah, this, this reaction can go both ways. Okay? Usually it means it's at equilibrium. Okay? So we've got some some new vocabulary terms here. Conjugate acid and conjugate base. I want you to look from left to right again. Here's my acid, and I'm going to ask you this a lot over the next month. What's our definition of an acid? What do acids do? They give away protons. Okay, so if that happens and this acid gives away its hydrogen, what is left of it? Just A minus? Guys, your conjugate base is whatever your is left over of your acid. After the acid donates its hydrogen ion, what remains? Your conjugate base. Similar situation with your conjugate acid. 
What's our definition, our new definition of a base? What do bases do? They accept a proton. So look what happens to it. After this base accepts its proton, we've now formed our conjugate acid. Think of the word conjugate to mean like what it becomes. Okay. My acid becomes my conjugate base, my base becomes my conjugate acid, and let me explain why these words, acid and base, are there. Look at the reaction, not from left to right, look at it going backwards from right to left. What is hydronium doing from right to left? Is it giving away a hydrogen or accepting one? It's giving it away. What kinds of things give away hydrogen ions? Acids. That's why that word is there. Look at from right to left. What is this guy doing? He is accepting a hydrogen, so bases do that. Okay. So that's why those words are there. And so you will have multiple choice questions that will simply give you a reaction and say, like, what which species is the conjugate acid in this reaction? Things like that. Okay. Same reaction. It's at equilibrium. Okay. Tell me one more time, guys. Which one of these was the base in this scenario? Okay. Which one of these was my conjugate base? Which one? A minus. What's the definition of a base? Things that accept hydrogen. Guys, the water, my base, and A minus, my conjugate base, both of them want, I hate to use that word want because substances don't have feelings, but they want to accept a hydrogen and they're competing over it. They're fighting over it. Who's going to win? Whichever base is stronger. Okay. If water was the stronger base, then this reaction would move dominantly this way. If A minus was the stronger base, it would dominantly move this way. At this point, right now, I would not expect you to um, know which one of those is stronger, okay? You don't even need to write this down if you don't want to because we'll come back to it. How you guys are eventually going to decide which base is stronger actually ends up depending on how strong this acid is, but we'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. All right, let's talk about a constant that we're going to work with a lot in this chapter. We just wrapped up kinetics where our rate constant was a lowercase k. What is a variable for a capital K? What is that? An equilibrium constant. We've seen it before. Okay. We had one equilibrium constant that was Kc. Do you remember what the little c stood for? Concentration. We had Kp. What did P stand for? Pressure. Okay. Well, we're going to have some more. We're, right, today we're going to see Ka. Anybody want to guess what A stands for? Acid. Yeah. We will continue to have more Ks, but in all honesty, guys, that little subscript letter really doesn't matter. You know, all equilibrium expressions are what divided by what? Products over reactants. Okay, same reaction. Products, I'll explain what's going on over here, don't worry about it yet. Products over reactants. 
How come the water is mysteriously missing? Where'd it go? How come it's not there? It's a liquid. What other states of matter do we leave out? Solids. We can include aqueous and gases in our equilibrium expressions. Okay. The only reason that little letter A is there is because this is an acid reaction. That's all. It's still just products over reactants. Now, you have some options here. And you can choose which situation makes you more comfortable. Some people will write acid dissociation reactions just like this, and they write their equilibrium expressions just like this. Other people look at this and say, well, I'm going to be excluding water anyway. I, I really don't need to include it in this reaction because I'm not going to be writing it into my expression. So watch how some people choose to write this reaction. They would write it like this. You can do this if you wish, but you don't have to. They would write it like that. I mean, we're not going to be including water anyway. This is basically, guys, like a shorthand. Okay? It's like a shortcut. They represent the same thing. This is just a quicker way to write it. And if you write it like this, then your Ka expression would look like that. It's up to you. Which one makes you more comfortable? I personally am probably going to write the long way more often than this, but it's up to you. They mean the same thing. The AP exam doesn't care which way you do it. Neither do I. Okay. All right. I think on the second day of school, maybe the third, I let you know that you had six strong acids that you had to memorize. Do you remember that little sentence that helps you remember them? Something with a breezy. Imagine, imagine a perfectly clear breezy summer night. Okay. Imagine a perfectly clear breezy summer night. I am once again expecting you to commit those to memory. Okay. If they've, if they've fallen out of your brain, put them back in, All right? And let's just refresh our memories on what it even means to be a strong acid, okay? And I said this when I first presented this, strong doesn't mean these are the dangerous acids. I mean, they are. They're not acids you want to mess with, but the most corrosive acid is not one of the six strong ones, just so you know. So what does strong mean? Strong means acids that dissociate, ionize, break apart completely. Hydrochloric acid is a great example. Okay? If you put hydrochloric acid in a water environment, it will not stay as H and Cl bonded together. They will split almost 100% H pluses, Cl minuses. Okay. So if we were looking at that equilibrium reaction, the forward direction would be the dominant direction because that acid's going to break up completely. That equilibrium constant would be a huge, huge, huge number products over reactants, we're going to have a ton of products. And we're not going to do any calculations with this today, but strong acid calculations are very quick and very easy because of this. And we'll, we'll come back to the numbers with this, not today, but if I know the molarity of, let's say, HCl, 
almost 100% of that HCl is going to be converted into H plus and Cl minus. So whatever the molarity of the whole acid was, that will be the molarity of the H plus, which is going to be really helpful for us when we start calculating pH. Okay, I'll get to that later. Okay, so here are those acids in case you forgot them. Imagine perfectly perchloric, clear, breezy, summer, sulfuric, night, nitric. Recommit those to your memory, please. What's the opposite of strong? Weak. Okay. Weak acids. Please don't mistake this to mean these are the safe acids. These are the ones that can't hurt you. Do you guys know what the most corrosive acid out there is? Hydrofluoric, HF, which is a weak acid. Okay, HF doesn't just eat through skin and bone, it eats through glass and ceramic. If any of you were fans of the show Breaking Bad, there's an episode where they don't just dissolve a body with HF, but the, the, the younger guy puts the body in the bathtub, pours HF into the bathtub, not remembering that HF will also dissolve the bathtub itself, and the whole thing comes crashing through the ceiling because it's in an upstairs bathroom, and then you have, like, melted body and melted tub. It, it's gross, but, you know, just saying. Choose your acids carefully when you're, you know, committing major crimes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, weak doesn't mean harmless. Weak means does not dissociate completely. In fact, doesn't dissociate much at all. So these acids in that HA plus H2O equation, the dominant direction isn't going to be this way. It's going to be this way. Most of the acid is going to stay intact and not separate. When we look at Ka values for these weak acids, they're going to be very small numbers. Ka is just products over reactants. There will be very little product. Okay. We're going to see this when we get to start looking at the numbers. You don't need to memorize your weak bases, guys. If it's not one of the six strong ones, then it must be weak. Okay, so these are just examples. The one at the end, I sort of want to call your attention to because this doesn't really look like an acid. Most of our acids begin with hydrogen. This one doesn't, and in fact, it might look to you like it's ending in OH. It's not really. Okay. It's just that they've put the hydrogen instead of at the beginning, they put it at the end. What polyatomic ion is this? Acetate. This is acetic acid. For some reason, I don't know why. Someone smarter than me can explain it. Acetate, they very often will put the hydrogen at the end instead of the beginning. Do you guys remember, what's the more common everyday name for acetic acid? It's in your kitchen. Vinegar. Vinegar. Okay. Um, this graphic is taken from our old textbook, and I left it in because I, I like it. This is a strong acid, this is a weak acid. This is just showing if you have a strong acid after it dissociates, it will be almost all separated into the two ions. Whereas look at the weak acid. Most of it stays intact, stays undissociated. There's very little dissociation.
This is the last thing we're going to do. And you will need our textbook to do it. There's a chart on page 667. It is not on 666, okay? It is on 667. So you're going to use that chart eventually. We're not ready to use it yet. It says, using that chart, arrange the following species according to their strength as bases. Tell me one more time, and you're going to get so sick of me asking you for definitions. What's a base? What does it do? It accepts hydrogens, protons, hydrogen ions. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to go base by base, and we're going to turn these into what they want to become, things once they accept that hydrogen. What does H2O become when it accepts a hydrogen ion? What's the name of it again? Hydronium. Very good. ClO2 minus would become what? HClO2. This one. H2SO4. Next. You seeing a pattern here? HOCl and the last one? Okay. So if I'm looking from here to there, if these are the bases, these are their conjugate acids. So before I get to this list, I'm actually going to put this list in order first. I want you guys to scan your eyes down these acids. Are any of these from our strong acid group? Which one? Yeah. That's one of our strong acids. Are any of the others in our strong acid group? Nope. Okay. I'm going to put a one next to it, meaning that is our strongest acid in that list. I'm going to tell you, because you wouldn't know, I'm going to tell you which one is second in the, in the list. That was going to be this guy, hydronium. Here's the deal with hydronium. Okay. This is a strong acid. These three, these are weak acids. Hydronium is like neither. Okay. It's like on the border. Think, you can think of it as sort of being like a borderline acid. It's not strong, it's not weak, it's on the border. So strong, borderline, these three are all weak acids. And this is what we need that chart for. Can you tell me please, because all three of these are in that chart, which one has the greatest Ka value. So which weak acid of those three has the largest Ka value? Which one? This one? Okay, so we'll call that acid number three. Which one has the next largest Ka? HOCl, okay, and then HCN. So what you're telling me is that of our weak acids, this one had the smallest Ka, is that correct? Okay. The smaller the Ka value, the weaker the acid. Right? The magnitude of your Ka value is an indication of acid strength. The larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Okay, well, that's great, and we've got this, you know, the, uh, these conjugate acids ranked, but we need to rank the bases. 
here's the thought process. Let's look at it instead of from this column to this column, let's look at it from here to here now. You said this is a strong acid, are you, do you agree? This guy, nod your heads, okay. A strong acid will have a very weak conjugate base. So if this acid is the strongest acid in this list, the base that it came from is the weakest. So which base in this list must be the strongest base in the list? Cn minus. So let's put them in order. Okay, HSO4 minus is my weakest base. What's next in line? Which base is next in line? Nope. This is the weakest. Then H2O, who's next? ClO2 minus. Okay, next. All right. And then Cn minus. Weakest base, strongest base. These are kinds of things you might see on multiple choice because it doesn't require any math or anything. Obviously, you'd have to be given those Ka values. Okay. That's where we're going to stop. <laughs>